Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about the Law of Chastity, which Latter-day Saints Covenant to adhere to in the Temple Endowment. The Law of Chastity means having sexual relations only with those to whom they are legally and lawfully wedded according to God's law. The Lord's Law of Chastity is the subject of frequent scrutiny and challenge since societal values are constantly shifting on this topic. So in today's video, we're going to be covering exactly what the Law of Chastity entails. And it's not just a list of don'ts, there are some very important do's in the Law of Chastity. But we're going to be spending most of this video diving into the why. Why the Lord requires chastity of us. Many would suggest that the church's standards of chastity are outdated, outfashioned, and some might even suggest harmful. So in today's video, we're going to be going over the practical and theological reasons for the law of chastity. So let's start off with the definition of the law of chastity. In the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the law of chastity means that we will not have sexual relations outside of God-sanctioned marriage. If you grew up in the church, you probably have had lessons on the law of chastity and have some sense of what it entails. The For the Strength of Youth pamphlet has guidelines for youth that also apply to adults about being chaste outside of marriage. The Lord's standard regarding sexual purity is clear and unchanging. Do not have any sexual relations before marriage and be completely faithful to your spouse after marriage. Never do anything that could lead to sexual transgression. Treat others with respect, not as objects used to satisfy lustful and selfish desires. Before marriage, do not participate in passionate kissing, lie on top of another person, or touch the private sacred parts of another person's body with or without clothing. Do not participate in discussions or any media that arouse sexual feelings. Do not participate in any type of pornography. According to the For the Strength of Youth pamphlet, abstaining from sexual relations before marriage includes avoiding sexual intercourse, obviously. But it also includes avoiding things such as objectifying someone's body, passionately kissing, lying on top of someone, touching someone's private parts, looking at pornography or inappropriate media, or intentionally arousing sexual feelings in yourself or others. And there may be more things too, depending on your circumstance. Married couples must also be strict in their observance of the law of chastity. They must have complete fidelity within marriage, which means avoiding all of those things listed with people outside of the marriage relationship. And married couples still need to abstain from all inappropriate media and any kind of objectification. And at the outset, I get it, this looks like a very daunting list of restrictive don'ts. But I think it all boils down to a very noble principle that the Lord desires all of us to treat our bodies and the bodies of others with the respect and reverence they deserve. And as I mentioned, the Law of Chastity is not just a list of seemingly restrictive don'ts, it also has some really important and divine do's. The Family, a proclamation to the world, highlights the important role that sex does have within a marriage relationship. The first commandment that God gave to Adam and Eve pertained to their potential for parenthood as husband and wife. We declare that God's commandment for his children to multiply and replenish the earth remains in force. We further declare that God has commanded that the sacred powers of procreation are to be employed only between man and woman, lawfully wedded as husband and wife. We declare the means by which mortal life is created to be divinely appointed. We affirm the sanctity of life and its importance in God's eternal plan. This indicates that part of the law of chastity is not just abstaining from sex when it's inappropriate, it is also a mandate to engage in sex when it is appropriate. When a man and woman are sealed in the new and everlasting covenant, sexual relations is ordained of God. Sexual intimacy is the divinely appointed way by which couples can participate in the creation of lasting bonds of love and in the creation of children. Each couple is different and it's up to every family to prayerfully counsel with each other and the Lord about their family's needs. However, the proclamation makes it clear that for couples who are able, part of the law of chastity includes engaging in sexual relations to both build lasting bonds of love and to have children. For the strength of youth similarly says, physical intimacy between husband and wife is beautiful and sacred. It is ordained of God for the creation of children and for the expression of love between husband and wife. God has commanded that sexual intimacy be reserved for marriage. And this brings us to the crux of the law of chastity, the why. Why does God ask us to be chaste? Why does the Lord ask us to be celibate when we're single and faithful when we're married? Does the church have to be so strict about it when others don't seem to be? I personally believe that the law of chastity has a lot of benefits in this life and it has eternal ramifications. For the sake of time, I'm only gonna touch on a few reasons and I'm gonna touch on them lightly at best, but if you are interested in learning more about the social science behind family and marriage or what other church leaders have said about the reason for chastity, I'm gonna link to a ton of resources in the description below. Today, I'm just gonna focus on three reasons. Living the law of chastity produces greater happiness and satisfaction in this life and the life to come. It shows our love for God and our fellow man, and it reverences the sacred powers of creation. The first reason for living the law of chastity is practical. Observing sexual restraint and morality can lead to greater happiness and life satisfaction. Practicing sexual morality can protect you from some of the emotional, spiritual, and physical trauma that can come from increased promiscuity. The process of sexual intimacy creates strong hormonal and chemical reactions that help two people create lasting bonds of affection, loyalty, and trust. 
In a marriage relationship, this bonding process can strengthen the relationship and lead to greater marital fidelity, satisfaction, and happiness. When this process occurs with people who are not 100% committed to each other, it can cause emotional confusion. And when this process occurs over and over with many, many partners over a period of time, it again can cause some emotional confusion and even trauma. Covenanting to live the law of chastity is necessary in the endowment because it is a prerequisite for the next step on the covenant path to be sealed in the new and everlasting covenant. The law of chastity helps prepare us to be sealed to a spouse and to live faithfully and joyfully in that covenant. For the strength of youth teaches, when you're sexually pure, you prepare yourself to make and to keep sacred covenants in the temple. You prepare yourself to build a strong marriage and to bring children into the world as part of an eternal and loving family. You protect yourself from the spiritual and emotional damage that come from sharing sexual intimacy outside of marriage. Remaining sexually pure helps you to be confident and truly happy and improves your ability to make good decisions now and in the future. The second reason for living the law of chastity is that it shows our love for God and for our fellow man. As I've mentioned in other videos, the covenants of the endowment help us live the first great commandment to love the Lord thy God, and they also help us live the second great commandment to love thy neighbor as thyself. The law of chastity helps us love God because it shows God that we're willing to obey his commandments even when they're difficult and when they're at odds with society. The law of chastity also helps us to observe the second great commandment to love our neighbor because it regulates how we treat the bodies of ourselves, our spouse, and others. In the church, we sometimes refer to our bodies as temples which need to be kept sacred. The Doctrine and Covenants teaches that the body and the spirit are the soul of man. Latter-day Saints believe that our bodies are just as necessary for our salvation as our spirits and so should be treated with respect. As we emphasized earlier, neither objectification nor abuse is ever acceptable in or outside of marriage. Mutual respect, loyalty, and love should always be our guiding principle. And a third reason to live the law of chastity is that it helps us reverence the sacred powers of creation. When we use our divine sexuality in God-appointed ways, we tap into some of the most potent and sacred powers in existence. The power to create covenantal bonds of love and the power to create new life. As mentioned earlier, sexual intimacy creates physical and chemical bonds of connection between partners. When a man and woman are sealed in the new and everlasting covenant, the process of sexual intimacy creates bonds of covenantal love. It really sacralizes this physical phenomenon and consecrates it towards creating a strong eternal family. A sealed husband and wife participate in sacred and even priestly creation when they forge new bonds of love and become one flesh, as Genesis describes with Adam and Eve. However, the purpose of intimacy is incomplete if it stops at creating bonds between two partners. Husbands and wives are commanded to use their intimacy to also multiply and replenish the earth. For a major part of learning how to become like our heavenly parents is learning how to be an earthly parent. Elder Jeffrey R. Holland said in regards to procreation, You and I have been given something of that godliness, but under the most serious and sacred of restrictions. The ability to reproduce may seem mundane because it is ubiquitous in nature. But when you really think about it, the ability to create human life is the power of God. It's the power of creation. God's work and his glory is to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of his children. So baked into our theology is the idea that as we become more like God, our fullness of joy and our work and our glory will come through the creation and nurturing of eternal posterity. When we multiply and replenish the earth in the new and everlasting covenant, we are apprenticing to become like our heavenly parents. Because the process of creating life is so powerful and has such permanent effects, it must be treated as very sacred. Elder Holland taught clearly among God's greatest concerns regarding mortality are how one gets into this world and how one gets out of it. He has set very strict limits in these matters. And if you're struggling with any of these aspects of the law of chastity, you can start today to work towards a new goal. No one's perfect and being chased in and outside of marriage is hard in a hyper-sexualized society like ours. And there's increasing pressure to embrace a different set of values regarding sexuality. But the Lord believes that we all can live the law of chastity and receive the blessings it promises. Repentance is a doctrine of hope for when we make a mistake. The atonement of Jesus Christ can heal our wounds and it can help us improve to live a chaste life. The adversary wants to fill us with shame and disgust and worthlessness when we make a mistake in regards to the law of chastity. However, the Lord wants us to recognize when we make a mistake and turn to him in repentance so he can heal us. Disclaimer if this wasn't already clear, victims of sexual violence or abuse are not guilty of sin. Other physical limitations in this life, such as infertility, may prevent married couples from having children, and that's okay. As long as we're doing everything in our power and circumstances to obey his will, the Lord will accept our offering. So to wrap things up, the sexual functions of our bodies are sacred and divine, when they are used within the bounds the Lord has set. The law of chastity dictates that we should only have sexual relations with those to whom we are legally and lawfully wedded according to God's law. Outside of marriage, we should try to avoid anything that arouses sexual feelings in ourselves and others. Within marriage, we should be completely faithful and use sexual intimacy to strengthen our marriage and family. 
We covenant to live the law of chastity because we believe it will bring us a fullness of joy and happiness in this life and the next. We show our love for God when we obey this law and we show our love for our fellow man when we respect their bodies. Participating in sexual intimacy is participating in the powers of creation when they are used in a sealed relationship. As we channel our God-given desires and abilities towards marriage and family, God will bless our efforts and we will participate with him in his work and glory to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man. 